Friendship community. Pastor Sarah here. I want to start by saying good morning, but I realize that some people aren't just tuning in on a Sunday morning. You may be watching this on a Tuesday evening. So whatever you're tuning in on, wherever you're doing it from, and whenever you're doing it, you are welcome here. Thank you for taking the time to tune in. We're going to begin with a prayer and a scripture reading done at the same time. We're going to go to the Lord's Prayer this morning. Matthew 6, starting in verse 9. So pray with me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Well, again, I want to welcome you to our online version of Gathering Together. We have a little bit of a body life announcement time now that I get the pleasure of sharing with you. The first is that Alpha has been happening. This is a great program to introduce friends and family members who may not know about Christianity, um, introducing them to the foundations, but also to the Savior himself. And so if that is something that piques your interest, um, contact Pastor Byron if you have any questions about that. 
The other piece of information that I have to communicate to our church family is of a really somber nature. We want to extend our condolences to Pauline Dagan on the passing of her husband, Ron, in this last weekend. He passed away on Saturday. And we just want to communicate to everybody who knew them that there will be an invite only memorial service for him. And so let's just remember to keep Pauline and the rest of the family in prayer. I'm gonna pass you to Kurt because he's got a very special announcement to make. Hello, Friendship Community Church. I just wanna take a moment and recognize and celebrate our grade 12 graduates this year. We actually have 15 of them, which is a large number of graduates that have either been connected to Friendship Community Church or have just been connected to our youth group. And they have just been a vibrant and amazing part of our youth and church community. And so we just wanna recognize them and also um, just congratulate them on this big milestone. The 15 are uh, Faith Brown, Mateo Hilton, Noah Stewart, Carmen Smith, Tim Bowler, Talon King, Travis Harper, Kaylee Newman, Lexi Louie, Cindy Wang, Ben Winkle, Ben Rosang, Elizabeth Lobb, Elena Harper, and Kate Hamilton. Congratulations, grads. We were able to actually celebrate these grads last Friday at the church with a social distance uh, grad event. Uh, we were able to uh, have a lot of them attend and um, give them a great gift from the church which would be personalized Bibles, the Word of God. What a great gift to give a graduate as they not only graduate from their high schools, but also as they're kind of transitioning into this kind of next phase of life. Even spiritually, they are no longer part of that youth group setting, but they are entering young adulthood. And we're excited to see these grads flourish um, with the Lord by their side in this next stage of life for them in the church and beyond. And so we're just going to take a moment and I would ask you to join with me in a word of prayer for these graduates. And as I'm praying, I'm just going to throw up on the screen some pictures of them so you can think of them and, and recognize them. And maybe if you know some of them, congratulate them yourself. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for our graduates today and we lift them before you. They are a gift to us and to many others. And during this season of new beginnings, we ask that you would make their way clear. We ask that you would keep their footsteps firm and remind them that they are, remind them that you are with them always. May they sense the freshness of your spirit over their lives in amazing ways. May they be strengthened, instilled with hope for the new roads you have in store. Lord, we pray for protection, for your covering, that you would surround their lives as with a shield. Protect these grads of their comings and goings. We ask that you would help them to live aware in a dark world and keep harm or evil intent away. We ask that you would hide them in the safety of your powerful presence. Our world is currently anxious, fearful, and uncertain. We pray our graduates are filled with courage and strength, that they may be a light to their friends and neighbors in this uncertain time. In your mighty name we pray these things. Amen. Well, thank you, Friendship, for tuning in. Would you continue to pray for the grads and uh, think of them in this, again, uncertain time? And many of them are doing different things and many of them don't know what they're doing yet. And so uh, just pray for wisdom uh, for them in that. Thank you for tuning in and for celebrating our Friendship Community Church grads with me. All right, bye for now. When the music fades, all is strength and I simply Just to bring something that's good, that'll bless your heart. I'll bring you more than a song, for a song in itself is not what you.
all this stripped away and I simply and give me an electric guitar and enough money to buy new designer jeans and and help make me popular and oh by the way I really need a Corvette um, and you know the new Corvette the mid-engine one the one that in, in maybe like blue or red red would be fine actually and oh by the way you know a Corvette would really make me popular and so really you're solving two birds with one stone here and um, and so all I just really need is for you to give me a Corvette Hey God, good good to chat again. Uh, hey, listen, there's this guy at work, and he's just really annoying. Wonder if you can take care of him. You know, I mean, not take care of him, take care of him. Just, you know, have him transferred or fired or something. Hey, thanks. Good chat. Oh, hey, yeah, how's it going? Oh no, you got laid off because of COVID, hey? Oh, that's tough, man. Thoughts and prayers. Thoughts and prayers. Oh, right. Rub a dub dub, thanks for the grub. Amen. Hey God. Yeah, I know we haven't talked in a while, but I could really use a hand. Prayer. In our world of technology and atheism, prayer is seen as something that is kind of weird, irrelevant even. But when a tragedy happens, we often hear that sentiment, our, our thoughts and prayers are with you. But what does that really mean? What is prayer? What is it for? Well, welcome to Friendship Community Church. I'm Pastor Tim, and we have been going through a series on re-examining because this is a time of change, a time of things being different. And so it's the perfect time for us to say, you know, if things are going to be different anyway, and we have an opportunity to change, then why don't we re-examine how things should be and see if we can change them to how they should be instead of just how they were. But how do we know how things should be? How do we know what to aim for? Well, we believe that God created everything and he has told us who he is in the Bible. The Bible is the writings of God to us. It's his love story to us through the Holy Spirit. And so we need to go back to the Bible and re-examine things compared uh, to our lives and, and how God calls us to live. And prayer is one of those things that we need to re-examine. You may have a wonderful wonderful prayer life, and, and I hope you do, and it may be fulfilling to you, you ha may have a wonderful relationship with God, but every one of us needs a reminder. We need to go back to the source and re-examine our lives, even if it's just for encouragement that, yeah, we're on the right track, but, you know, because unless we're willing to re-examine everything according to the standards of the Bible, we are actually holding standards then that that are not biblical. I had a theology professor that said uh, at least once a year, he takes his whole set of theological beliefs and throws them out the window, goes back to the Bible, and rebuilds the entire thing. And his theory was, if it's from the Bible, uh, then it should always end up in the same spot. And if he doesn't, then he probably deviated somewhere along the line. Now, I, I, don't, I don't think there's a need to go to that extreme. I mean, he was a theology nerd. He loved to do that. But uh, I don't think we need to uh, be open to re-examining absolutely everything right from the beginning all the time. But we do need to be open to re-examining different aspects of our life as God comes and puts it on our heart. And we need to make sure that the things that we believe and do line up with what the Bible teaches. And so 
What does the Bible say about prayer? In, in a few moments, we're going to look at, at a few examples from the Bible, but it's important to understand a few things that prayer is not. Prayer is not like, you know, rubbing a lamp and being granted three wishes. God is under no obligation to grant you anything. Yes, there are prayers in the Bible where someone boldly asks for things and God grants their requests, but it's not an instruction that we should do the same or that God will always grant our requests. It merely describes one person and their relationship with God. Secondly, prayer is not a list of requests. Yes, of course, we can bring our concerns to God and our requests, and we can ask Him for things, but uh, but God is not a Santa Claus that if we're really good, He gives us stuff. Third, prayer is not a lifeline to call a friend when we finally get stumped in life and can't do it on our own. I mean, yes, we should reach out to God, and we should rely on God to provide and to care for us, but we, if we only give Him a call when we need something, That's not a relationship. We're actually just using him. So we finally get to what prayer is. Prayer is communication with God for the purpose of us building our relationship with him. It's why Jesus always took the time to go into uh, solitude and, and to pray and because he longed to be in the Father's presence and needed the relationship. So if we are going to have a relationship with God and prayer is how we communicate, then think in terms of your own relationships. How do you choose to, how do you feel uh, about people who only call you when they need something? I owned a truck for a while and, and suddenly I had way more friends who all happened to need to move at the same time. You know, think about that kind of relationship. Uh, that, that you've had over the years and, and the kind of communication that, that uh, you enjoy in a relationship, to have a good relationship. But if you only call someone when you need something, are you really a friend? Do you have a good relationship with them? You know, in our walk with God, many people don't understand what prayer is and how they should go about it. We, we see older people sometimes and, and they have a, a good walk with God and, and they spend lots of time in prayer in their own lives and they have a good relationship with God. But in public, uh, there's a need to pray for requests. And so they pray about situations and, and certain requests and we are called to do that. But sometimes we only see that in our prayer lives. And of course, the Bible tells us to ask God, but it is always in the context of relationship. So then many people assume that, well, prayer is just asking God for stuff because that's what we see in our public gatherings or that's what we see in in a prayer time with others. So let's learn how we need to approach God in prayer so that we don't approach God out of wanting something from Him, but we approach God in a way to build our relationship with him. So how do we approach God? 2 Chronicles 7, 14 and 15 says, And my people who bear my name humble themselves, pray and seek my face and turn from their evil ways. Then I will hear from heaven, forgive their sins and heal their land. My eyes will now be open and my ears attentive to prayer from this place. Okay, so the first thing that we need when we pray is humility. We need to understand, first and foremost, that God is not a buddy that we play cards with. He is the holy God, the creator of all things. We are his creation that that chose to rebel against him, by the way. We We are not in a position of strength over God. We're not in a position to try to manipulate God. We must approach him with humility to humble ourselves before him, to seek his face, to long to be in his presence. When we live for ourselves 99% of the time, and then we come to God for help for that, just that little 1%, ah, God, I just, I just need a little boost here. Well, that's not humbling ourselves. We need to give over every area to understand our need for God and his amazing grace and mercy on us. Our heart, our hearts need to have an understanding of gratitude and humility. Thank you, Father, for the wonderful grace on our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for giving yourself so we could be free. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for showing me 
who I really am as a sinner and then as a free person that you have made me to be. What a difference it makes in relationship when we approach it with humility rather than entitlement. It's the difference of of someone walking into a room and saying, hey, here I am, everybody. You are so blessed that I have arrived. Or walking in and saying, oh, there you are. I've missed you. How are you? I long to know more about you. How was your day? How was your week? We must approach God with a genuine heart of humility and surrender. Mark 11, verse 22. Jesus replied to them, Have faith in God. Truly I tell you, if anyone says to this mountain, Be lifted up and thrown into the sea, and does not doubt it in his heart, but believes what he has said will happen, it will be done for him. Therefore I tell you, everything you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him so that your Father in heaven will also forgive you your wrongdoings. The second thing we need when we pray is faith. We read this verse and, and I mean, sometimes we're just amazed. How could I ask a mountain to move and it would move? It's why people in Saskatchewan have more faith than we do in the West because they have already asked all their mountains to move. No, just kidding. The faith that Jesus is talking about is not in our power to do something through prayer, but faith is a firm understanding of who God is. It's a belief that God is able to do anything that he wants to do. But, you know, sometimes movies like Star Wars have kind of tainted this for us, and we think, um, you know, we just need to believe, and the Force will fill us, and we can do it. No, no. Because the faith that Jesus is talking about is about perfect alignment with the will of God. When we have faith in God, we are humbling ourselves to his will. And so if the will of God is to move a mountain and he wants to demonstrate who he is through you, then you need to have faith and ask and God will do it. But it is God who is doing it, not you. Our faith is not the power that moves it. Our faith is the understanding of the will of God so that we know what to ask for boldly. You know, my my wife is allergic to certain flowers, especially to lilies. And now lilies are are beautiful, but how would your, your, our relationship go if I expressed my love for my wife by buying her a large bouquet of lilies? Probably not so good. I mean, there's nothing wrong with lilies. They're beautiful, and I think they smell nice. But but because of my knowledge of the one I love, I know that this would actually be against her will because she's allergic. You see, if we read this verse uh, from Jesus from a self-centered perspective, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, everything you pray and ask for, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Wow, I mean, we may think that's like a blank check. We just have to believe and and we'll get whatever we want. No, because he starts with you need to have faith, have faith in God, which is an understanding that the one that you have a relationship with, you understand and you know. Faith is surrendering to the will of God and knowing his great power and knowing who he is and his character and then carrying out the things that he has called us to do. And if it is God's will, we need to have faith that he will do anything that he wants through us. Even moving a theoretical mountain. Because prayer is about relationship with God and allowing him to work through us. John 14, 12, verse 14 says, Truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and he will do even greater works than these because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, I will do it so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. Again, many people have approached this verse from a self-centered position. Okay, if I just use the name of Jesus, then I can get whatever I want. And he has to give it to me, right? 
No, absolutely not. Because we have to understand this from a place of relationship. What does it mean to do something or to ask for something in the name of someone else? I was trying to think of a few examples and it would be like um, maybe like sending your, your child to the store with your credit card. I don't think you're really supposed to do that because they don't have the credentials to actually represent you. You have to be there and it has to be your name on the card. But if they did allow it, your child would be representing you. They may have their own desires. They may see that chocolate bar and they want to buy it. But if they're truly representing you, they would think, okay, what does mom or dad want? And they would reflect your desires and they, they know that that's not what you sent them for and they would make the right decision and not buy the chocolate bar because it doesn't represent you. The Bible actually gives us the picture of an ambassador. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5 verse 20 says, Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We plead on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. We represent God to this lost world. We are here on his behalf. So we are doing something, uh, if, if we are doing something in Jesus' name, it is because it represents what Jesus would want. And if it is what Jesus wants, if what we want is what Jesus wants, then when we ask, he will give it. Because doing the will of his Father brings glory to God. Psalm 37 verse 4 says, Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desires. In the same way, uh, many people read this uh, you know, on a, on a calendar or an inspirational Instagram post and think, Yeah, if I'm happy that God is with me, then he will give me what I want. No, because the whole verse is this, Psalm 37 verse 3. Trust in the Lord and do what is good. Dwell in the land and live securely. Take delight in the Lord and he will give you your heart's desires. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act, making your righteousness shine like the dawn, your justice like the noonday. If we delight in someone, our desire will be for them not for us. If we delight in them, we will trust in them. We will do what they want. We will commit our way to their way. Therefore, if we delight in the Lord, meaning if we long to do the will of the Father, then he will respond and give us our heart's desires because our heart's desires are his heart's desires. We want the same things because our hearts have been transformed to long for what God wants. But there are things that get in the way of prayer, aren't there? Because this is about relationship and not about getting things. There are, this, there are the same things that, that get in the way of our relationships with people as do with God. The first one is sin. Psalm 66 verse 18, If I had been aware of malice in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. Or the NIV says, if I had cherished sin in my heart, the Lord would not have listened. You, you know from your own relationships that when you have wronged someone and, and you have not asked for forgiveness and there is an, an unspoken thing between you, then there is a broken relationship and, and you can't communicate well. There's always something in the way. If we want to have a good relationship with God, then we need to get rid of sin. And no, we don't have to be perfect. The, the psalm doesn't say, if I wasn't perfect. It says, if I had been aware of malice or if I had cherished sin in my heart, if I know that there is sin in me, but I like it and I don't want to get rid of it, then there's a problem. No, we're not perfect. But if we want to get closer to God, then we need to put him first. And if there is sin that we are aware of, we need to get rid of it or else it becomes a fence between us and God. Another barrier in our prayer life is that sometimes we have the wrong motives. James 4 verse 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Well, this is the, uh, oh God, if you would let me win the lottery, I'll give half of it to the church. 
No, no, that's not about loving God or doing his will or a relationship with him. It's about, about me getting the other half of the lottery winnings, the, the benefits, the rewards, the power of God. But look at what Jesus says. Matthew 7, verse 21 to 23 says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and perform many miracles? And then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you evildoers. What are our motivations when we come before the Lord? I mean, there, there are so many needs in our world and, and we need to pray about them, but, but do we pray to get things? And even if they are good things, God, uh, please heal this person or bless that person, but, but do we want to actually know the Father? Luke 11 verse 11 says, What father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? I mean, notice that the amazing thing that the Father will give us Many riches? No. Perfect bodies? No. He will give us everything we need, the Holy Spirit. When we are in a right relationship with God, when we are in communication with Him in prayer, and His Holy Spirit is in us, and we will receive the perfect answers that we need. And sometimes we ask God, and and God just says no. Right? I mean, how many times do we ask for things that will it will actually hurt us in the long run. And God, God blesses us by not giving us the answers uh, to, to the prayer requests. But, but other times, we will never know why God said no. But he did. And he is perfect and we are not. And so we do need to accept his answer. Other times, God says, yes, go, move forward. And if this is his will, and and so that we will have the power to move forward, and the Holy Spirit will be with us, be encouraged. God says, go. And still other times, the answer is, not yet, or wait. Maybe God needs to teach you to trust, to teach you patience. Maybe he is working things in the background and, and setting the scene. Whatever the case, we need to keep praying and keep bringing it to him and keep waiting for the answer. We live in an age where everything happens now. Well, we get angry when the internet page of useless information takes more than five seconds to download. And, and then we, we pray and God says, just wait. And we just lose our minds, right? I mean, I've been there. I hate waiting. But God teaches us through the waiting. We need to learn to trust him and to use the time to make sure that we are in the will of God. This is something that God actually wants from us. And so here is our challenge for the week. As you re-examine your prayer life, remember this. The point of prayer is not to get stuff. The point is to build a quality relationship with God. So does your prayer life look more like a wish list? Or is it relationship building? Are are we starting in humility? Do we have faith in God? Do we know him? Are we representing Jesus and, and bringing glory to God in our requests? Do we have sin in our lives? Are we asking with wrong motives? Do we lack faith? I'll close with the lesson that Jesus gave to his disciples. We call it the Lord's Prayer. This is Matthew 6, verse 9 to 13. Therefore, you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, your name be honored as holy. Notice how he starts. We should start in humility, putting God first, recognizing that his name is holy, that he is perfect and we are not. Then he says, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, surrendering in faith to the will of God, having in mind the kingdom things and not our own. 
Then he says, give us today our daily bread. Not make us rich or give us the bread for the whole week. No, no. This is a submission that daily we humble ourselves before him and he provides our daily needs. And forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. If we refuse to forgive others but ask to be forgiven, then we don't understand our own sinfulness and we don't repent of our own sinfulness. Then how can God truly forgive us? Finally, verse 13, And do not bring us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. We are asking God here to protect us from situations where we might stumble so that it won't hurt our relationship with him. And this is a relational prayer. God, you are the king. God, we live for you and your will. Thank you for providing everything I need. Help me to represent you and and your great mercy and to protect me from doing anything that would get in the way of our relationship. And God loves you and he sent his son to die for you so that you could have this kind of a relationship with him. You're, You're not entitled to it. You didn't deserve it, but he made a way for you to come to him, to know his will, to live for him, to surrender yourself to him so that you can experience the love of God. He longs for you to get to know him like he knows you and and he asks us to do that in prayer. So how's your prayer life? Meaning, have you talked to God this week? Have you got to know him? How about today? Have you discussed things that you love, things that he loves, things that you need to change and things that that concern you, things that you desire? Have you asked him to change the things that you desire to the things that he desires? Have you asked him to search your heart? Have have you desired to be with him? Maybe it's time to re-examine how we think of prayer. Let's close in prayer. Father, you are the great king and we are humbled by your great love for us. Thank you for making a way for us to have a relationship with you. Thank you for your forgiveness. Help us to see our sin and your forgiveness so that we are quick to forgive others. Thank you for providing for us what we need. Help us to do your will. Help us to know your will and and to protect us from the things that ensnare us and and bring us down so that we, we can have a good relationship with you. May your spirit speak through us and our prayers guide us to your truth. In your name we pray. Amen. During these times of uh, separation because of COVID, uh, prayer is one thing that, that still binds us together. We, we can care for the body of Christ by bringing it before the Lord because we all have some kind of relationship with God. So let's strive together to have a good relationship. A good relationship includes a strong prayer life. We are uh, where, where we are, are getting to know our God. So be in prayer together. Pray with your family. Pray on your own. Listen to God. Ask for wisdom. You know, we need to ask for wisdom in a number of things in our church. How about Pastor Kurt as he wraps up his ministry with us? I mean, uh, he has just a couple weeks left. So make sure you reach out to him and, and bless Kurt and Jackie. And, and uh, they, they mean so much to us as a church. And, and pray that God would guide them and provide for them and, and really bless their, their ministry with the indigenous people on the peninsula. We, we as a church long to partner with them and, and, and be a part of that. Um, and, and build a strong and healthy relationship with our indigenous neighbors. But, and we need to pray too for, for the new youth pastor, who, whom, whomever that might be, to pray for our search team that, that we look uh, for, for a new youth pastor. Uh, pray that God would give us wisdom and we would find someone that could have good relationships with our youth and, and with our church and to lead us in good relationship with Jesus. Be in prayer so that you can be strengthened in your relationship with God. For Friendship Community Church, I'm Pastor Tim.